I'm going to be showing you two easy and intuitive ways to draw Lewis dot structures. It'll be up to you to decide which one to use. So in order to draw Lewis dot structures, we first have to determine the number of valence electrons that surrounds each atom in a compound. Phosphorus atoms have five valence electrons, while chlorine atoms each have seven valence electrons. So I'm going to start by drawing the central atom, which is usually the atom that appears the least in a molecular formula, so in this case it's phosphorus, and then I'm going to draw its five valence electrons as dots surrounding the phosphorus, or the P, and I'm going to draw them one by one on each side of the phosphorus. So I'll start with one, two, three, four, five. That's it. So notice we have three singular electrons and one lone pair. It's the singular electrons that are most likely to be used in forming bonds with the other atoms in the compound. So I'm going to draw each chlorine atom around the singular electrons. And then I'm going to draw the seven valence electrons around each of these chlorine atoms. And I'll start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So notice each chlorine atom also has a singular electron and three lone pairs. Well, again, it's the singular electrons on the chlorine atoms that are most likely going to be used in forming a bond with the phosphorus. So this is the Lewis dot structure of phosphorus trichloride. And just to give you an idea, if I were to draw a bond from this electron to that electron, this electron to that electron, and this electron to that electron, there's your phosphorus trichloride structure. Simple as that. So the other way of drawing a Lewis dot structure is starting with the structure itself, if you're familiar with it, or maybe you looked it up online and saw something similar to this. But we're going to start it the same way as we did the previous one. We have phosphorus trichloride again. And remember, phosphorus has five valence electrons, and each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. So now, do know that a single bond is created by two electrons. So we can start by replacing each of these single bonds with two dots, or two electrons. One contributed by the phosphorus, the other contributed by the chlorine, another one down here by the phosphorus and by the chlorine down here, and a third one by the phosphorus and another chlorine. So for phosphorus, that's one, two, three electrons contributed to this compound, but it has five valence electrons. So we'll put the other two up here as a lone pair. Each chlorine atom has one valence electron contributed. They have seven total, so we'll put the other six right here as the three lone pairs, another six here, and this one gets the same three lone pairs. There you have it. We have the same Lewis dot structure that we saw previously, just a different way of doing it. Maybe an easier way for you, but that's for you to decide. So let's try another example. How about carbon dioxide? So just like in the previous example, I'm going to start by determining the number of valence electrons on each of the atoms in this compound. Carbon has four valence electrons, and each of the oxygens have six valence electrons. And then, just like before, we'll start by drawing the central atom, which is the atom that most likely appears least in the molecular formula, and in this case, it's carbon. So then I'll draw the four valence electrons around the carbon one by one on each side. So one, two, three, four. And notice it has four singular electrons. So these are the electrons that are most likely to be used in forming bonds with each of the oxygens in the compound. So we only have two oxygens, so I'm going to draw one here, and I'll draw the other one right here. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so I'll draw the six dots or electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'll draw the same on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six. So notice that each oxygen has two singular electrons, so these are the electrons that are most likely to be used in forming a bond with the carbon. So what will happen is, this electron on the carbon will form a bond with this electron on the oxygen, and this one with this electron down here, 
and then on this side here we'll have this electron on the carbon form a bond with this electron on the oxygen and this one up here. So I'm going to redraw this. I have the carbon in the center. These two electrons will be used to form a bond with these two electrons on the oxygen and then I'll draw the two lone pairs on the oxygen and then these two electrons will be used to form a bond with these two electrons on the oxygen. And then I'll draw the two lone pairs. And there you have it. That's the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. Yes, we had to redraw it to clean it up a little bit and move some electrons around, but it's simple as that. So now let's try to draw the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide the other way. And remember, we still need to know that carbon has four valence electrons and each of the oxygens have six valence electrons. So this is the way uh, as though you knew the structure of carbon dioxide or maybe you searched it online and found something that looked like this. So remember, each single bond consists of two electrons and we have a double bond here or two single bonds, which means there's four electrons on either side of the carbon. So we can replace those bonds with two electrons contributed by the carbon and two electrons contributed by the oxygen in forming the double bond. And same thing on this side, two by the carbon, two by the oxygen. Now carbon, one, two, three, four, has four valence electrons, so carbon is done. However, each of the oxygens have six valence electrons and we're only showing one, two, for each of the oxygens. So we'll draw the three, four, five, six on this one, and one, two, three, four, five, six on this one. And there you have it. That's the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. Simple as that.